Life of Niger Hero just spoke about Trump's phone call, puts Frederica Wilson to shame. Maisha Johnson, widow of slain Green Beret La David Johnson, has made a fool of herself since claiming President Donald Trump was disrespectful to her husband's legacy. This ridiculous argument was also parroted by Florida Democrat Frederica Wilson. Well, you can be sure Al Sharpton got to her, so that, you know, that'll put that to rest, so you know who coerced her into saying that. So, as we go on, now, Michelle Black, widow of Staff Sergeant Brian Black, one of the other Green Berets killed in Niger by radical Islamists, is speaking out regarding her, uh, her call with Trump. Michelle says Trump was brave and gracious. Okay. Welcome back to the White House. Look at the West Wing doors there. As the investigation continues into the deadly ambush of U.S. soldiers in Africa earlier this month, another of the widows tells her story. It's the first public comment from the wife of Staff Sergeant Brian Black, who died in Niger. Here's correspondent Trace Gallagher. It was incredible, you know, even just this year, I was thinking 12 years, you know, has flown by and I don't even think 50 will be enough, you know, so, um, but I'll take 12, that's good. Michelle Black says her husband gave her the best years of her life, the best gifts of her life, 11 and 9-year-old sons, boys who now realize their father is not coming home. Michelle says it's important for them to know what kind of dad he was and what type of man he was. I know that I married a true hero. When you have true moral integrity and you care that much for other people, that you're willing to put your life on the line, you're a hero. A hero he is, but the nation only knows Brian Black is a special forces soldier killed in circumstances that remain murky. Were Black and his fellow soldiers randomly targeted or led into an overwhelming ambush? Michelle Black says she eventually wants to know the details, but for now, they won't bring her husband and his fellow soldiers back. He always knew his odds before he went in, because I think he knew he was probably not coming home, but I think he knew that if he took a risk, some of his friends might. Though she's not watching the news, she is aware of the controversy surrounding both the mission in Niger and the president's conversation with a gold star wife, though she has a different take. I'm very grateful that he called and um, he spoke to the kids and I think just the excitement from that made it a little better, even if it was just for a minute. So. Yeah, he was very gracious, and I appreciate anyone who calls, because, like I said, that takes quite a bit of bravery to call into that kind of situation. It does. She points out the military is a very tight-knit community, and as hard as it was for her to lose her husband, she also agonized over the death of the other three soldiers because she knew their wives and their children. Brett, so sad. Trace Gallagher, live at Fort Bragg. Trace, thanks. Yeah, they don't know what happened, but I think I have an idea um, that the fact is that those IT workers that Debbie Wasserman Schultz had, they have information and they had access to computers. That's what happened to that other uh, soldier that was killed at, uh, when Trump first got into office, when he went to visit the wife. No, they still have access because they, they have the codes, you see. Even though a Juan, let's say, doesn't have the access at this point, he already gave the access and the information to other people. They know how to get in. What do you, why is all this a problem, one after the other, like as if they pr know beforehand the attack is going to happen? You're, you're not going to tell me that's comp uh, that the, uh, it's not compromised? Of course it's compromised. And then you got Al Sharpton telling the other ones to say that Trump is uh, nasty. Uh, are you kidding me? Anyway, this it's a disaster. Anyway, nearly three weeks after the deadly ambush on U.S. Special Ops forces in Niger, 
ABC News has learned chilling new details about the mission gone wrong from a survivor of the attack and a senior U.S. intelligence officials, official. Their accounts provided in separate interviews raise questions about why a second, potentially more dangerous mission was tacked on late in the day, even after a second team that was supposed to join them was unable to do so. What was started as a recognizance mission to meet with local leaders turned into a kill or capture mission aimed at high value target, according to both sources. So you're going to tell me the, it's info, the government is infiltrated. That's why this took place. There's no other way that this, this, uh, didn't, uh, this took place because it's been infiltrated already. They already know the moves before, before uh, the moves happen. They know it. That's why you have to redo the whole system now. There's no way, or else you're just going to be getting hit left and right. It's a, it's a, it's a shame that the country has, has fallen to this uh, level. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.